Hey boys and girls, welcome back. Uh, we've got a new series here I'm gonna be uh, starting here. Um, kind of focusing on mayfly nymphs uh, that have breathers, you know, on the sides and how and different techniques that we can use to tie these up so it looks like they have breathers. Um, this is probably the easiest way, but it is a bit sloppy. So um, sometimes if you're looking for that buggy type bug, um, most swimming nymphs uh, or swimming mayflies are very thin, um, you know, very streamlined. When you get into the clingers and stuff, you start to see, you know, more of these little breather things on the sides. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, they're always gonna be present one way or the other. And if you wanted to add an element to a mayfly nymph or something like that, uh, that's kind of what we're gonna focus on here today. Uh, what we have here is just a, a size 12. This is fulling mill. 46 or 5065 sorry this is just a regular nymph hook i got a three millimeter black metallic bead from dunn uh, let's see here for the shell back this is just orvis brown for the body um, i'm using a medium clear uh, medium, I like the medium better because it just gives you a little bit better segmentation for these, you know, 14 to 16 size, you know, on this. For the dubbing we have, um, I got a mixture of uh, this SLF and this Fulling Mills. This is uh, their Rusty Brown. Okay. And for the tinsel. I was using an old piece, uh, but what we have here, this is Hola Tinsel Black, because I want that black body underbody. So because we're using a clear debris, I want to add that type of an element to it. Um, and also what we have here on the sides is some um, ostrich oil. This is tan. Okay, let's get into this. I picked this. Uh, size just to make it a little bit easier to show some of these elements here the toughest part um, about this bug is when uh, you're trying to clean it up so that the breathers are just on the sides and uh, a lot of ways you can do that um, using a lighter it's probably the easiest, but also the most dangerous because you run the risk of burning everything off of your bug. Um, and if your hands aren't the steadiest, or if you have a lighter that's, you know, a little wacky um, or too hot, you can just burn the entire bug out. So um, as far as the tails go, I'm just using some pheasant tail here, making this a swimming one. So I'm um, going to keep this tail very short. Gonna take that down just before the draw. Okay. Spread those tails out, lift them up a little bit, and then you're gonna go underneath them one time, pull back on it a little bit, then make your own. That kind of gives you a little bit better distinction there. Okay. Okay, for our tinsel, um, that's what's gonna be next. This is kind of why I like using the clear D-rib mostly, because 
this is the easy way to change the color of your bug um, is that underbody. So we're going to put this tinsel on first, wrap it with the clear, and uh, yeah, it gives us a pretty neat effect, almost like a holographic, like you can kind of see through the bug a little bit. Then we're going to take our monster churl, find a nice one, and just pull it off there. Now when you pull this off, you know, there's a direction to these fibers. So you wanna make sure that the fibers are facing back, not forward, okay? Tie that in by the butt as far down here as I can. So I don't want the little fuzzies in there to affect anything else. Paper a little bit better. I don't want to bump in there. That's the other thing with this D rib. It, if it's uh, you know has an, an underbody that's just a touch you know off of consistent, you're gonna see. It, so right, that's not too bad. I'm gonna tie that off. Get our tinsel. I'm gonna wrap that first. Just touching wraps. Like I said, you're just trying to create a little bit of color or something underneath that d -red. And this, uh, this black tinsel, you know, has a good bit of green in it. And First one by hand, so I can line up the second one there. Just keep a little bit of a downward pressure, or backward pressure, rather, as you're winding this up. But you do want it to be touching. Not stretching it very much. Kind of see where that bump is in the back there. I didn't do a good enough job covering that up. Good thing is, we still got another material to cover it up with. <laughs> there. When we wrap this, 
ostrich hurl. Um, you want it to fit into, try and get all these tails out of here. this light ostrich earl and the dark body and it gives you even better segmentation there so now this is ostrich earl if you've ever worked with it uh, it is rather delicate but the fibers that are on it are pretty long um, if you get a really good ostrich hurl, you know, eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch, um, long and fibers. Okay, so you can kind of see where all of this is wrapping around. It's sticking straight out, um, all around the hook. Okay, well, mayfly breathers are more or less only on the sides, so, um, how do you get rid of that? Uh, one way to do is, you know, to trim them. Just do that, okay? But you still got a lot. Um, that's kind of where your lighter comes in. Um, now, I would tell you to get your string out of the way and make the lighter, the flame, so that it is bending upwards. Just watch your fingers. Try to get close to that, but not touching. You can see how fast it's coming out. Okay, and that cleared up the back, which is, you know, what we wanted. Because we want them on the sides. Okay, so now we got all these little breathers on the bottom. Pretty much what you're left with now if these are too long for you um, yeah you can cut them like at an angle so that they the ones at the back aren't as long that's typically how they are okay good segmentation that's kind of what you're looking for, all right? But it's a bit sloppy, as you can tell, and you can ruin a lot of bucks with the with the heating element. I swear I'd do I'd waste more that way than you know doing it the other way, and that's kind of you know why I uh, you know go around that uh, direction. You know, I don't tie too many like this. All right, so we're gonna put our scud back on the top. Since that down real good, wrap it back to the middle. The thorax, don't worry about the little fibers everywhere. Okay, and you're gonna get uh, your mix of your dubbing. Put this on. I said this is a buggy pattern to begin with just because of the way we're tying in this ostrich hurl so leave it up to you what direction you want to go with what type of dubbing I was just looking for something contrasty Come on. So 
Put that down. Sloppy, but effective. Good segmentation on the back. You know, you got, uh, you can brush this out if you want to have, you know, more of like a little bit of a leg effect. Um, you know, just to finish it up that way. You can kind of brush these little fibers off to the sides. Brush your tail up so it looks good. Because once this gets into water, all of these little fibers are going to be pulled underneath or, you know, start flowing in the water. Um, so it's got a little bit different look. You know, if you do that, you can really see kind of what those little breathers are, you know, going to look like. How clean it makes the top of this. All right, that's the easy way. We'll come back in a week or so and show you a couple different ways, a little bit better distinction to it, uh, different ways to wrap either uh, your ostrich hurl or, you know, something different, you know, so there, there's a thousand ways you can go about it, but uh, we'll show you this easy one first. All right, guys, go home, practice, tie some up, try to find some local patterns that, uh, or local bugs that uh, you know you can kind of mimic and see which ones have those and see which ones don't. So, all right, go catch some fish. We'll see you soon. Thanks for stopping by.